What's up guys, I'm back with another breakdown video. Yes, that is two in one week. Um, I can't always promise that I'm gonna be able to move at that rate, but I'm hoping that I can start doing this on a regular basis. Um, I think it's fun to show you guys the layers and, and break down the complexity of some of these shoots, as well as it helps me look back at some of my work, some of the things I missed, or um, just reflect on old work. I think anytime you get the chance to to do something like that, I think you should, because um, that's the only way you could probably truly grow and change and do more with your work. Um, I'm constantly criticizing and, and looking at my work and trying to see where else I can take things, or I'm just always trying to stay fresh on multiple different styles, whether it be strobe, natural light, light painting, um, you know, using continuous light, any, anything, um, and balancing ambient and strobe. And uh, that, that I think helps me, you know, always seem like I'm evolving or at least feel like I'm evolving. Um, and that leads me into a shot like this. And that's why I want to show this shot because it was, you know, a big balance between using the natural sun as well as blasting strobe all over the car to get it picture perfect and, and achieve this commercial look. So a bit of context about the shot. This was for Volvo of Rochester, and it was actually for a billboard. And the two, the two cars I was set out to shoot the billboard work was of this XC40, and then it was an S60, um, both Volvos. And if some of you guys follow my other media pages, you probably remember when I was posting about this. I was pretty excited. I, I mean, this was the first ever billboard I. Um, got to shoot so not only was there a little bit of a learning curve as far as cropping goes and we'll talk about that but it it was also um, a good opportunity to really have a commercial look here on, on a billboard that you know a ton of a ton of people were gonna be passing by every single day so I wanted to make sure that the car had the whole photo in general had something that you know Rochesterians would know of the location while while also still trying to fit into the class and the style that Volvo has to offer. So that's what led me to this location. And yeah, so this is the photo I want to break down and we'll go layer by layer. We'll talk all about it. And um, I actually do have the strobe, the individual strobe layers this time too. So we can also break that down and, and say why I'm, what I'm doing and why I did it. So I'm going to click off all of these layers. And here we go. So here is the base first starting locked background. And then if you guys seen any of these before, um, you'll know that these two layers underneath my, my duplicated background are just, one is a, a selection of my sky and the other one is a selection of my car. Um, I wanted to, as I start, I always try to basically break down the photo into sections. If I know I'm gonna be moving in a direction on a certain part of the photo, I try to section that off so that at any point I can change specifically those areas if I don't like how it's looking or I want to add something specific to it without messing up the rest of my background or the grass or the, the red brick, anything in general. So now that you guys got those out of the way. So this is the first shot that I'm going to be using for the background. You can see here that it's got the the sky is now properly exposed and that was through kind of a bracketed shot um, which it which it wasn't even really a separate shot it was the same shot one dumping the highlights down bringing that file into Photoshop and then merging it with the normal background shot so that I have one of each um, when when I'm doing composites you can see here on, on this this shot without that sky. If I know I'm gonna be doing a composite and I know I want to potentially attack the sky and depending on the sky I get, if it's not too cloudy and it's an even color or say it's very cloudy, I'll tend to make sure I grab a couple layers that are um, a little blown out and white so that when I go to select that sky, it makes my life a little bit easier especially like working around these trees and stuff. Now, 
I can quickly, let me just duplicate this layer, I'll show you what I mean. I can quickly jump into channels. I can drop down to the blue layer because I know mainly my sky was blue up there, right? So say I was working with a, a nice blue saturated layer. I can now duplicate this layer. And, and the same thing goes for if it was a white sky, right? There's gonna be contrast on white compared to the green that was here. So it turns black and white when you go in the channels and you turn them all down. So now if I go with my levels, control L, and I dumb the levels all the way down, but then boost the highlights all the way up, I got a pretty contrasty sky there that I can really quickly come down here in my right corner and I can hit the select button. Now, what that did is I have all the highlights selected and all the darks aren't selected. So we can turn our layers back on and now I have up there selected. And yes, you know, if you, I were to just paint over this whole image it would bleed onto these other selections, but that's why I'll come in here and I'll start deleting it off of what I don't want it to affect. It's it's just a really quick way um, to handle the. I'll just show you in a second. It's, it's just a really quick way for your for Photoshop to help you grab these trees and realistically start painting in. Look how I grabbed all these little dots in here. It, it helps you start to fade in the sky in in a hard, very hard like if you tried to select this you'll want to pull your hair out um so this kind of gets you going in the right path and that's just a little trick that i uh that i do to select my skies so let's get rid of that so yeah so basically the boom i, I dropped the sky in there and uh that's a different layer and i i unfortunately compress that down into that background layer I'm always like a two two 2.85 gigs I'm I'm always trying to save a little bit of file space so I deemed that sky wasn't um, necessary to keep on top of my file so I probably saved like 0.15 of a gig and uh, you know compressed it down there to, to just save a little bit of space um, so the next thing we're gonna get into and I have it all grouped here is the car lighting um, so we'll just go layer by layer on this. Let me recenter. Um, here we go. So the first shot, this, and now I have the car selected already, right? From the old layer. So now I bring in this new layer of just the car and I take that selection and I paint in the layer, this layer mask here. So if we just X that off, you'll see that there's a, perfect squared image that I've selected from another photo. I place it and line it up over here and then I paint it in over just my car, right? And then we just go panel by panel to make it work. And you'll see I'm just wrapping around the car with a light. So let's just take the marching ants off and talk about this a little bit. So this is a pretty good starting point. I am shooting with a bare bulb here, no no modifier, just the dish that comes with the Flashpoint Explorer 600. And I can put um, a link in the bio to the light that I'm using. And I'll actually also put a link into the bio of all the gear I used. Um, just on that note, this is with a Nikon Z7 with the brand new Z mount 24 to 70 um, Nikon lens at f2.8 so um this wasn't shot at f2.8 I believe this was shot at it's got to be around I want to say 8 or 11 I wanted to make sure I got a lot of detail in the background but regardless I'll put that that stuff in the comments um or the bio so this is a pretty good starting point we got light everywhere we want it um now the issue is we have some marks here we have some light hits that we don't want I generally like this highlight that I was getting right on the bot the body line of the car, um, but it wasn't perfect. This this is um, this still needs work, I guess you could say. Uh, you got tons of light hits and hot spots and dark, so it's a good starting point. Um, that leads me to the next group, which is I labeled it here car fixes. What it really is is cloning, healing, and and brushwork. I try to put that all in the section after I'm done doing any car lighting, um, just because any, any strobe lighting, just because, um, it needs it. it. You need to kind of smooth all this stuff out. Like from, from far. Yeah, sure. This 
looks much better than this. So that's great. But you could see the blues a little washed out. Um, you could see these highlights need to be just toned down a bit and, and shaped to be a little bit more consistent than like here you see there's like a little thicker than the rest of it. So let's start getting into the fixes. And first we had the front bumper fix. So right there is a little bit of clone work and some brush work. I'm basically going brushing right over that, that um, reflection that I did not want from the step. I, I am not anti-reflection, but if it doesn't make sense like this, this doesn't make sense at all to me. If my reflection's running across like this, if it's running ac across the, the windshield, I don't mind that. If it's moving with the body line, I don't mind it. If we had um, some sort of reflection of building windows, like going down the side of the car, I don't mind it. Um, but something like this, it really kind of looks weird. To, it almost flattens that front bumper. So I just basically do a gradient map and paint um, uh, some highlights and some dark blues in there and uh, start shaping it. And then I, obviously I have to do it to the underneath. So I'll zoom right in. You'll see me click these on and off. So since I did this one, now this doesn't make sense. Um, so from there, I selected that section and did essentially the same thing with keeping in mind that this is going to need to be darker. We're messing with two shapes here. If I just use the same consistent blue, this would got this would have gotten very flat. So I have to sec select this out and I have to make this darker and, and it should be darker. The way I have my light hitting, since my light is up here, aiming down, this should be dark. That should have a little drop shadow on it. And this should be where some light is hitting. And this is where most of the light should be hitting. So it's really just shaping, you know, simply shaping the light and how it should be. You know, bright, a little bright, getting darker, darker, much darker because it's angled away from the light. So that's just how light should hit that space, I guess you could say. So let me delete that we'll keep going. Um, the, the next layer, the next two layers, maybe no, just, just one here is going to be all my light hits or most of my light hits. I, 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 again, I don't need to take all of them out cause we want to keep a level of realism, but you can see me just clicking them on and off. I'm just taking a lot of the light hits away. This layer 12 here was this little annoying spot right above the headlight. It, it was, um, it was a bit blown out. So then when I brought it in and put it there right, out, right above the headlight, cause it needed some sort of shape there. It was dull looking because I blown it out. Right. So then I came in here with a, again, this is like more of an airbrushing technique and I basically painted the way I wanted it to look. So I sat here and I did a stroke of blue. And then you can you can almost see it right here, right? If you close this off, you have you have your. Let me click this on. You have what it's telling you it needs to do right there, right? So I grabbed white and went across to follow that body line, and then I grabbed blue from here and I followed across and gave me that body line. And now that gives me, when you zoom out here like that, now that gives us a little indication that the body, this new body line that goes from here to here is gonna, you know, it's forming there rather than like it just being that dull flat white that, you know, this whole section here got layer masked into. So let's go there, front fender. Right there, right on the front fender. This was a big one, so I just did it on its own because I—that's another thing too. You know, you, you know, if you have one that's this big and it's on a curve and it's a little bit more challenging, make sure you put it on your own. You can condense these later, and I, I didn't want to condense them um, to save file space because I, I remembered I was going to want to show you guys this this billboard shot. Um, but yeah, this right here needed just to be on its own, just in case I messed up or I went really deep into it and I couldn't go 
you know, couldn't retrace my steps enough, um, I wouldn't be getting rid of all my light hit work. It would be just this one. So off of that, and that was just through a lot of a lot of cloning, a lot of brush work. Here's another interesting one too. Um, kind of had these weird rim lights on the gas tank that I did not like, so I went in with a black brush, and I I basically mimicked the the door line here. I sampled that door line there, and I painted around there to clean to clean up that. It just from far out it looks scratchy, right? That looks weird, but from here now now it's prominent. It lets you know that that's a gas that gas cover, and then this last this last one is more fixes to like the blotchiness that's um that's all like right here and right here and right here you'll see me click it on see that there was a little bit of whatever this is on the gas cap or the gas uh, cover this last layer in carfix was an overall adjustment um kind of finalizing this group of of fixes so then I got it to this point I was pretty happy and um, I then made another layer and did some last global car fixes I called it which which is even more of everything that was in this group um, this is this is honestly probably why car fix 2 didn't make it into car fix and it was his own thing you know I probably stepped away from this image you know I got to this point and let a day go by so that I could come back, look at things, understand um, what I didn't like about the image from there. And I do this a lot. Um, y y if you just sit here and edit and edit and edit, you can really get, you know, either going too far in a direction you didn't want to go into. Sometimes it's nice when you're working on a composite that needs to be this clean and this detailed to just step back and you look back at it in a, in a day or two and say, oh, that looks weird that doesn't look weird I hate that I did that and you kind of adjust it from there um, so that that's why this car fix 2 probably got put in here on top of that after a couple of days and you can see this is where I basically selected the whole car I added more blue saturation in in this car fix here so you could see it, it was dull and now it's more blue you even see it in the highlights here there's way more blue in there look how much whiteness there is and now there's blue dumped in there and I also selected out this piece here, and I can't show you this because I condensed it, but I selected this out here and I smoothened, I, I just went with a brush that was not white, It I sampled like right here and I just really lightly worked at it at like a 20% opacity and made sure that that highlight was blue but it was a very light blue compared to the blue down here and down here so that it let you know that there is a hump there until you get up to there if that makes sense so and i basically did that throughout the whole car you can see i did that right here too we'll watch the shift yeah so that I think is it for the fixing now we're on a little bit of a color balance so I'll zoom out it, I know it's hard to see this in on YouTube um, but this is an adjustment to my shadows you can see by the layer mask there there's just a, little, a bunch of these little white dots because that's all the there's not too much shadow from a layer mask standpoint in this photo so everything white is what's being affected and that's all like little dark spots so when I click that on, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it adds a lot of red into my darks and purples and reds. And um, I wanted to do that to, to kind of warm up my darks and and give a an overall warmth to the entire photo, especially with the car being blue and knowing the sun was blasting at these, these trees up here in the corner. Um, so I wanted to, I definitely had the intention to go red and purple in my darks. And then in the highlight, I don't know if you guys can see it again, I add, there's kind of a an orangey reddish hue. You can see it in the pillars a little bit. I basically wanted to make that more yellow. And it's, it's so subtle, I really don't know if you guys are gonna see it. You guys might be able to see 
yeah, you guys will be able to see in the windows here. This was what the dark layer was doing. Look at the purplish red that gets added to those windows, and that's just a that's just toning. You know, we're basing it, we're we're creating a color theory here, and a lot of times, especially with the architecture of this building, um, you know, purpley bluey tones in the blacks is a little royal. It's a little it's got a little fashiony um, upscale to it. So that's why I decided to go with a red and a purple in the black and. Um, color theory is a whole other thing maybe i'll make a video um based off of you know some ideas and directions of color theory but and then this was just to balance that and add yellow to my highlights so i had this nice yellow purple um you know playing together so the next thing i did from here and also back in in all the way to the car lighting some of the side shots the wheels were perfect in them so i just took the wheels from the like the side shot that was um i'll just show you guys the angle the the one that was back here hitting this panel lit this perfect and then the one that was lighting here lit that perfect so i just rolled with the wheels a lot of times i will shoot the wheels completely on their own with some reflectors and modifiers but for this i really didn't it just took the light and i i loved the way it looked I loved the the little glow I was getting on the top wheel, so I just rolled with it. Um, so next up, I think we have some flares. So again, if you guys watch the Cyberpunk video, um, I'll just do another one with you guys right here. If you guys watch the Cyberpunk video, it's kind of the same idea. So I had, you guys know the gradient filters I have already made, um, and you can make more and more. and base them off of color theory I, I mean there's this is one I made this is one I've made one I've made this is just a white one this is a black one for a photo like this we'll start off with orange um, again I, I wanted to add you can see in my flare I wanted to add instead of it being too orange I wanted to start introducing a more yellow flare so what I did was came in here I just went to this one we shifted it to yellow a bit. Make sure we're on radial, because you can shape it. Um, you don't want to go with the one that goes straight across. We're going to switch this to linear dodge. And I just dragged like this. Pop. And now that gives us a flare. Now the beautiful thing about how we set up our photo, see now I'll have this spitting across the side. So it looks like we're getting this like light leak over the trees and that sun is really exposed. The beautiful thing about what we did in the beginning of our photo was we kept that sky, right? So if you're saying, oh, but now you're blowing out the sky and you're losing that blue contrast in your sky, well, I can select that and then come in here. Actually, we'll just layer mask this, right? So I'll select that. Then I'll invert the selection like that. And now we can come in here and make sure it's not touching our sky and the flare is just leaking onto our building. Something like that, right? So now, and then you could do the same thing, whereas if that, if you want a little bit to affect your sky, just dumb the opacity down and you can have it affect just a little bit so that you get to still retain some of those blues that we're trying so hard to get to contrast with our car here since they're playing off of each other like that as a weight game in this photo. But yeah, so that's how I did that. And you know, you can see I put one on as a base to the trees and then I let one really spill all over the building and you know, really stretched it and and I initially just kind of let it hammer my sky. And then I added in a flare camera right, and you can see it right there. And that I just basically wanted to act like some of the the light flare that I added in on the left side was then leaking onto the right side of my frame. A lot of times when you have light leaks, they leak on the opposite side that the f initial main flare is coming from. So realistically, I wanted to try to have some sort of leak coming from over there. And the initial layer was more of a red tone leak um, as you can see here 
in the little thumbnail it's it's got a lot of red hues to it so all I did here was above it I put a hue and saturation layer and in that hue and saturation layer I told it to this little logo right here will tell it to only affect the layer it's above so with that once I once I did that I click I checked on colorize and colorize makes it so it, that entire flare will have the color that I select up here to throughout the whole the whole object right there so if I turn that off you can see boom a lot of the red comes back in but when I shift this you'll see a lot of purple a lot of yellow it, it, it's a it's a very saturated um, so when you click over to the colorize feature you select where you want it to colorize so now you can see it's a little softer but more consistently the color throughout the entire flare so you know I threw it uh, again to like match that yellow flare I put on the left side of the frame I I tried to kind of have the same consistency in in a tone or a haze over there and and I dumbed the saturation down a little bit obviously I could turn the saturation saturation way up but I dumbed the saturation down a little bit because I didn't want that leak to be dominant and have have it sucking your eye over into the top right corner I already have bright leaves up there that are gonna pull your eye up there so I just wanted a leak to make the flaring make more sense so let me just revert all that so then this next layer here is just a, a slight curve layer on um, it's, it's a channeling the RGB affecting just the RGB channels so it's it, basically that means it's going to affect the contrast and I just did a very subtle S curve and I selected out right along here basically selected the grass out and if you see me toggle it here you'll see I just added a little bit of contrasty punch so with everything that was happening with the strobes and stuff I needed I needed to create more contrast and a little bit more saturation down here in the grass because it was getting too flat for the style the photo was going in so next we have a pretty much nearing completion on the file um, a couple things are happening here so I have it, it's basically an overall cleanup layer um, everything gets compressed into this y you'll notice that I'm I compress I'll do a bunch of things especially when I'm doing flares you'll see I'll compress all that into a layer above so I'll keep all that stuff but when when you compress when you're doing a lot of light light leaks and in artificial flaring um, in in blank spaces like in the sky you can't see it in bright spots but in the sky you'll start to get banding um, so it's important when you're doing these leaks and stuff to make sure that they have some sort of noise added to them and then after they have the noise when you compress them into one layer it kind of just flattens in and, and um, smooths all of that content into being separate layers into being one layer and, and it really does worlds for um, banding issues um, the other thing too is you can see in the foreground here I'll just switch over to a little yellow brush here and kind of circle some of the things so you can see you know we we you got cleanup area down here there was a a pole and like some random leaves and a pole here and you know I'll just click it on and off a couple times it's it's a very little details but you'll see in the step here you know cleaning up some of the weeds cleaning up that molt that the crack in the in the step there um, just it's like little things and and stuff like this you got to be careful because you could sit here for hours and hours just um, touching up the little things that maybe nobody sees from out here but overall when you look at the photo it there there you just get the sense of um, a very clean look when you're doing a commercial photo like this so I think to me there's value in in cleaning up some of these like you know these are just like dead leaves sitting in the grass it, it does nothing for the photo so I just you know grab my clone stamp and, and got them out of here um, another thing too is you know in, in a lot of high-end car photography you'll you'll never really see you know it's okay for these pillars to be coming out of the car 
right? But you'll never see like bushes and trees coming out of the car. So instantly shooting this shot, that is a red flag. That's got to go. It's like a weed is growing from the roof of the car. So that stuff like that gets edited out. And uh, obviously if we we're at an angle where you could see the roof, if that was reflecting into the roof, you would then need to take it out of the, the reflection of the roof of the car as well. Um, another another big one too is the rear window. So since this was a for for Volvo Rochester, I didn't take the window stickers off. Um, I I left them in there and just figured I'd you know either one shoot the opposite side, which here didn't work out. Um, I actually did shoot the opposite side on another photo, which is this one. So that that I didn't have to worry about it. But for this one, I actually just um, basically selected along that. I tried to f stay as true as possible to that. And then with a light brush and brush and, and uh, you know, a very light opacity, I sampled like this, this saturation of blue. And then I just slowly started painting it so that it would, you know, feather into that tree line that I was in, like kind of making up now you could see the tree lines there right so i basically just followed a fake tree line or the tree line was that was actually there and i followed that and then grabbed a, a dark sample painted it on this half inverted and then painted a blue the this bluish sky tone on the second half so now we don't have a window sticker there so when we pull all the way out it just flows like the front window and the back windows luckily had a bit of tint on them so that you weren't seeing in there, it made life a lot easier. Now, now if you could see into that rear window and you could see a seat or something, this is a, a way more difficult. Not impossible, but way more difficult. Um, you, you would probably almost be shaping a seat and repainting an entire seat and making that look real, which, um, it's not, like I said, it's doable, but it's um, way more time consuming. And, you know, looking back at it, I should have probably just took the sticker out and uh and in stuff that i've done a lot of you guys that are that are following my work you know i do a lot more content for porsche and audi i nine times out of ten i'm taking the sticker out and i'll just shoot it shoot it like that and just pop the sticker back up in the windshield so yeah and uh then on top of that this is the complete final that i'm going to check on here and the reason why it's in here as a smart object is i brought in the complete final when I'm done with the file here, I bring it, I save it as a PSD and bring it back into Lightroom and I do some minor final tweaks to it. Um, this is where I'll do, you know, any slight overall global color toning. Um, if I want to bump the fill light as a whole together, if I want to just affect the blue, I'll, I'll do a couple little minor shifts like that. I'll do my final sharpening over in Lightroom on top of the PSD. And then I'll do a, um, a perspective correction, which is all like you scroll all the way down to Lightroom, all the way down to the bottom of Lightroom, and you basically just hit a button. Um, I, I, can, I can maybe do a tutorial on this, but it, it does wonders because what it does is right now, if you're looking at this photo, you'll see, like, let's just say I grab the selection tool. You'll see if I, if I grab this gap, look at that slight angle. Now, now this might not be a big deal to some people, but um, I, I enjoy architecture and in the little bit of research I've done in architecture, this is a huge, huge um, incorrection, I guess you could say of, you know, architectural photography, you know, being an automotive photographer, a lot of times we're shooting against architecture. So you kind of have to keep in some of those same practices. So this issue right here, I fix at the end. And, and you know, if we, if we select it over here, you'd see the same thing. The, it's closer down here than it is up here. And th this is an issue throughout the whole photo. Look at the windows. The windows are off a little bit. Um, that means this whole building is kind of leaning at, at an angle. So that last adjustment in Lightroom perspective, it corrects the perspective, which now you can see. I'll get that selection tool back out. Now my building is perfectly straight. My pillars are straight. Look at the window. Look at the window and the border and the frame of the window. Look at the the gutters right here. Or the, the shutters, I mean, not the gutters. Um, 
and then, then you look on this side too perfectly straight this pillar here straight this concrete piece straight the edge of our frame is nice and straight it's, it's the that last adjustment that you know kind of finalizes the entire photo as a whole and the perspective as a whole the, now one note on that is one could say oh why didn't you just do that off the bat you can't you can't necessarily do that off the bat when you're doing this style of photography and composite lighting and where you're merging you know this this photo here has one two three four five six seven eight nine around nine to ten photos merge into it so if i would have done this shift beforehand there's a chance that there's a little bit of tripod movement so each shift might be off like a couple of pixels and then lining all of this up could be way more inaccurate than lining it up the way you shot on a tripod so it's a very good practice to do at the very very end and really all it's doing is it's transforming it's it's like if you if you it's like if you hit control t on this final file here and you went to distort and you like held down control and an effective you know you like moved it around right so through cropping and distorting lightroom automatically like kind of does this for you to get everything nice and straight and um yeah so then this is the final file my computer's taking a bit of time to say we don't want that done and yeah so this is the the final file i rolled with and and now lastly too i wanted to talk a little bit about you know i did say this was for a billboard and, and the challenging thing about that actually be, this being my first billboard shoot was you got to keep in mind the frame of a billboard while shooting right so you know every it, you almost want to potentially aim for a you know that hero shadow I'm, I'm gonna have a shot that's on a billboard i need that that front quarter shot that's the hero stance but in that mindset you got to be careful because your billboard crop might be that you know most billboards the digital billboards are a little bit chubbier um height wise they're more like something like that it was the final image um but still even this like you had to think about i think we rolled with i think we rolled with something like this um but you you still it was it was challenging to think about what was going to be my frame and it, it made me it forced me to like be further away from the car in order to get the shot that i knew we were going to crop into so it was basically shooting wide knowing what i was cropping down to and and that was a, a little bit of a learning curve um which which is you know you take a couple of shots and you're like there's no way this is going to crop in and then you adjust you back out um I, I think having more of the side of the car than a, like a front quarter shot worked really well because when you squish this down you know you have a nice like the car is still taking up the same amount in your frame where if if it was more the front end yeah it could work but um i think that the entire background would have probably had to change um or the angle would have had to change for for something like that to work out um and and you're just going to see less of the car so i i think um you know looking looking back at at these photos um i would just dive right into some styles like this if i knew i was shooting for a, a billboard um so yeah this is the the final image of the XC40 and um, I appreciate you guys sticking around and checking this out I had a blast doing this uh, shout out to my buddy Rob Law for kind of whipping around town with me and you know let, trying to find locations and um, guerrilla shooting these cars in a yeah I had an afternoon to shoot this one and an afternoon to shoot the S60 um, and we we really just were as efficient as efficient as possible as two people could be and um, I, I was really happy with the results I, f I feel like we um, we did exactly what I was hoping for and uh, Rob was a huge help in speeding my process up with you know helping me with strobing the car um, you know many times for shoots like these I have a wireless strobe head and um, 
if I'm by myself, I have to run back and forth from the camera to the car where I could just have Rob, you know, sliding over and firing off the next frame, sliding over, firing off the next one. And uh, it's, it was a huge help. So um, I'll, I'll put his link down below too. Um, so if you guys want to check out his Instagram page, you should definitely give him a follow. But uh, yeah, so I uh, appreciate you guys stopping by again. Like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to pump out more. I, wa I want to put out a couple of other videos that maybe are just like on a specific topic like uh color grading or replacing a sky maybe we could talk about that a little bit more if you guys have uh any any questions or you know i'd like to see more of this drop it down in the comments for me and uh you know maybe i can start planning these out um even more or planning out some other content that it's not always like a 30 minute 40 minute breakdown video um but yeah, if this helped you guys or um, if you guys enjoyed this, please give me a follow, a like. Um, it all helps, and I really, really appreciate any of it. Um, so hopefully this helped, and I will catch you guys on the next video. See you later.